Now I've got an easy pattern for you today. It's one of these that are easy to tie, no exotic materials, but you know it's gonna be a fish catcher. And as today is September 1st, fall's just around the corner, I'm gonna be tying an October caddis wet fly version. I wanna be tying this from the recipe in David Klaus Meyer's 101 Favorite Nymphs and Wet Flies. And as you can see, it is a pretty buggy and big fly. He recommends tying this on a six or eight long kerr-shanked hook. And you'd fish this like any wet fly. Just cast it down and across and at the end of your drift, let it rise like an emerging natural would do. Now the only material in this that a new tire might not be familiar with is called an aftershaft feather, sometimes called a gimp feather. Now where do you get these feathers? Well, you don't just go buy a bag of gimp feathers. You get them from uh, the, one of the bigger rump feathers on a pheasant skin. It's just a feather right there on the back side of it. And if you have a pheasant skin, you'll have plenty of these feathers. And if you've never tied with them, I'd recommend giving it a try. They're really pretty cool and I think an underused material. So there it is, the October Caddis wet fly. Now make no mistakes, this is a pretty big bug. There's a dime right there. I'm tying this on a size eight. Let's go ahead and pinch this barb. And this is one of my go-to hooks. It's a Jay Stockard Model 430. It's a multi-purpose curve shank hook. I'll use it for a lot of nymphs, hoppers, and streamers. Just vary the size based on the bug you're tying. We're gonna use some orange thread. Let's catch this in. It doesn't really matter where and take it back to the, oh, about where the point, the barb would have been. And the rib, it's gonna be a pearl tinsel, one of these kind of clear-like or a mirage or opal, something like this in a size medium. So let's catch this in just back here toward the back. And I'm gonna use some orange rabbit for the, the body. Just fur, you could use whatever you like for your wet flies, but I think rabbit works pretty well and holds water, so it'll be a pretty good body material for this. Now we're gonna dub it up there to about a fourth of the way back behind the eye, so get a long noodle. It might still take us a couple of applications here. Okay, I think that's gonna work. Maybe I went a little farther than I should have. We'll see in a second when we get to the head. But go ahead and wrap this rib and whatever you think is going to work as far as spacing goes. And you could counter wrap it if you want. I'm not, I don't think it really matters here. Now the hackle on this thing, it's partridge, but not one of these partridge feathers with the real thin, Tips. These are kind of for spider legs and whatnot, but grab one of your partridge feathers that look more like a soft hackle. See that, that webbing there is kind of, um, they're married together, the barbs are. And I'll create a little tie-in point like this right here and just catch it in. I may need to go a little farther back because we've got some after shaft feather up front. We do want a fair amount of this hackle though, maybe four wraps, we'll see in a second. I'm gonna grab my hackle pliers here. Got enough feather, but this makes it just a little bit easier to preen these back as we wrap it. So that's four wraps. I'm gonna go ahead and get one more. We can sweep this stuff back in just a second here. Okay, I kind of like this. A lot of hackle feathers up here, but I think this fly calls for it and looks better like that. So let's just sweep these back a little bit. Smooth this area out right here. And now we're gonna take a gimp feather. It's just a pheasant aftershaft feather from a, a pheasant skin here. I'm gonna tie it in from the, the fat side. You do wanna be careful with these feathers. They're pretty brittle. So you can't put a whole lot of pressure on them when you're wrapping them. And I'm gonna live on the edge here and just try to wrap this without hackle pliers. And whatever you think is gonna look good, it might be three wraps, it might be four or five. I guess it's depending on how many 
uh, you know, how much fluff you have on your feather. So let's go one more and get four here. Okay, and got a lot of fluff right here, but we're gonna clean this up here in just a second. It's gonna look pretty good in the end. Okay, lick my fingers a little bit and just pull everything back and then work on our head. And the orange head is part of the fly, so don't be afraid to make a pretty big head here. Let's whip finish it, see if we have any clean up. And I'm not cleaning this thing up a bit. I'm gonna put a drop of head cement on it, call it done. So there you go, folks, October Caddis Wet Fly. Pretty fun pattern, you know this thing's gonna be effective. So I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.